You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts. All right, Black and White Sports supporters, let's talk about a couple of different things. Number one, we're going to talk about the WNBA expansion draft and who it could be that the Indiana Fever may actually lose in this upcoming draft for the Golden State Valkyries, I believe is what they're called. And um, there's a name on here that would really, really bother a lot of uh, Indiana Fever fans. And then there's one name on here that I think, frankly, a lot of fans at this point, especially because of the connection between Dijanae Carrington and one Alyssa Smith, I think there's, a, I think she would be somebody a lot of fans would welcome to go. You know, we we watch the videos of her uh, not exactly setting the greatest screens in the world for her fellow players, and a lot of people have been like, "Well, is that because she's literally dating somebody on the Connecticut Sun?" And all the while. You have Dejanae Carrington, her girlfriend, giving Caitlin Clark all of this grief this season. So let's start there, and we will get to the the Dutch auction that has WNBA a box of WNBA cards going or starting at three thousand dollars. Now the price could go down, but you gotta wonder: Will people pay three thousand dollars because you got cards in there from Caitlin Clark? And it, it's going to be an interesting um, place to see where that auction goes. Uh, seven hundred and fifty bucks is the floor, so you're you're paying seven hundred and fifty dollars no matter what if you want a box of these cards. And um, I mean, wow, seriously, it's absurd. Several top WNBA players may not be protected heading into the expansion draft. One thing is for certain, though, Caitlin Clark, Asia Wilson, and Brianna Stewart won't be leaving their respective franchises. However, some intriguing names could be on the board, such as Atlanta Dream star Haley Jones, who is yet to find her groove at a star level. Jones could be left unprotected, averaging 3.9 points per game over 40 games last season, with Atlanta already having backcourt depth. I don't know that anybody would consider that some big loss. Over in Chicago, Diamond to Shields. That's right. That is the player who, on the court, uh, slammed into uh, Caitlin Clark during the last Chicago Sky game, Ed Reed style, as Caitlin Clark was coming down the court. Diamond to Shields could be available after scoring just four and a half points per game last season. And Angel Reese, Camilla Cardoso, and Kennedy Carter are also bona fide cores of the roster. They're not going anywhere, I assume. Clark could also lose. Caitlin Clark could lose Lexi Hall. That's the name nobody wants to see go out the door. Hall is a former top 10 pick who shot 44.1% from the field this season. However, Clark and Kelsey Mitchell are the Fever's go-to for protection. Aaliyah Boston is not going anywhere either, folks, at all. So we we will flash over here. I think uh, this is the Indy Indy Star, and this is what they said about Lexi Hall in this draft. They think Lexi Hall will most likely be protected. She has one season remaining on her rookie contract. She started the season on the bench, getting minimal minutes and even some DNPs, but flourished after the All Star break. She went from shooting twenty two percent from three to nearly fifty percent in a fit fifteen game span. And she was great in spacing out on the floor for Indiana in the final stretch. Well, and she was uh, she was a ball of hustle, is what Lexi Hall was. She was a ball of fire, ball of hustle, played good defense, and grabbed some key rebounds in some in some big games. So I cannot imagine that they're going to let Lexi Hall get away, but they could. They could. In a, any other case, I would say Nalissa Smith would be protected, but here we go. Outside factors overlooking the season, including Smith being vocal about lack of touches she got this season and saying she didn't contribute as much as she wanted, makes me think it could be better for the two to part ways. Uh, like I said, I think a lot of fans are hoping Nalissa Smith hits the door. 
The Fever could protect her and hope to get something out of a trade as well or keep her in her final year of her contract. And there's, of course, Fabinle, and I really like her. She is 32 years old, but she played some big minutes in some games in the second half of the season when she got back from a uh, foot injury. Uh, people that are going to be unprotected for sure, Katie Lou Samuelson, okay, bye. Grace Berger, bye. Christy Wallace, bye. And uh, Erica Wheeler, bye. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think any of those players would not be a massive, you know, massive cut for the uh, Indiana Fever. But again, they're probably only going to grab one. So who it, who it will be, I don't know. So that brings us over to this, folks. This is insane. Uh, the global sensations, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are going from college basketball to WNBA this year. The WNBA has countless fans today who might not have been able to name five players in the league just one year ago. I might been a, I might have been able to uh, name five players. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, and this heightened attention and interest has surely made the WNBA tons of money. But added intrigue doesn't always work out for fans. A great example is the ticket prices skyrocketing at many WNBA games, making it difficult for many fans to witness Clark, Reese, and other players. Look, let's be honest. Making it hard for a lot of fans to see Caitlin Clark. All right? I've seen the ticket prices for these other players, including Angel Reese, and it's nothing to scare anybody off. I mean, it's just not. The second, the the e even the uh, the ticket vendors out there, most of these games you can get in for a very low rate if Caitlin Clark is not involved with the game. Another example of this surfaced on Saturday when an ex-user broke the news that sports trading card company Panini has priced their new WNBA boxes at $3,000 as part of what's called a Dutch auction. Now, I believe that will actually start there. The price starts at a very high number, then it decreases at consistent intervals. Eventually, when the price hits fair market value, the product will sell out. Here's the thing. The floor price, which is the lowest amount the card set can be bought at, is $750. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of fans reacted to this, and they were like, you got to be shitting me. Even the $750 price has got a lot of fans just throwing their hands up. The players couldn't even afford a box. I mean, yeah. I remember when solid boxes went for 130 bucks. Yeah, sorry, but what the bleep. Yeah. Effing scumbags, the modern side of this trash more idiots will buy this that's absolutely absurd but people will buy it look it's capitalism i mean let's just be real if people are willing to pay that much and and the price you know if the demand is great enough and people will pay it at that price i i can't get mad at anybody is it too high for me hell yeah i'm not paying that i'm not paying 750 bucks for it either but that shows you, once again, the draw that is Caitlin Clark coming into this season, a box of WNBA trading cards, at least 750 bucks, up to 3000 Could be 3000 Wow. I mean, that's say things out loud you never thought you would say. I mean, I wouldn't have given you five bucks before this season for a box of WWE. Uh, you would have had to pay me five dollars to take them. I mean, I'd have been like, that's just clutter. You're going to have to pay me to take that. I'm going to have to buy something to put it in. <laughs> I mean, honestly, wow, that's crazy. For the record, would I like to have a couple of good Caitlin Clark cards? Yeah, when I get my cabin and my studio done and all that, I'm going to start looking around. I am. Tell me what you think. Peace. I'm out. Till next. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.